Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 19 of my Java video tutorial series. Today, we're going to talk about regular expressions. And what you do with regular expressions is you quite simply just define exactly what you're looking for in a strings of text or arrays or whatever using codes. Take you through a whole bunch of different things, and it will become very easy to understand in the end. First thing you need to do, of course, is get yourself a regular expression library. And there you go. Now you got that, and you're ready to go. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to dump two strings inside of here that just contain different types of information that I'd like to be able to search for. I'm going to take you through this piece by piece so you'll completely understand it. Now, to start off, basically, whenever you're searching for something, you want to put it inside of brackets. So any characters you want. Now, let's say that you wanted to get every uppercase letter from A to Z. That is exactly how you would do it, or like that anyway. And if you wanted to also get every lowercase letter from A to Z, that's how you do that. Or you could put A through F, anything like that. Or you could also come in here and put in numbers. Another thing you do with regular expression is let's say you want to search for any sort of characters that are not specific things. So that's all you would need to do. So if you wanted to find a series of characters that were not A through G, that is exactly what you do. You put that little caret symbol in there. And if you're looking for white space, for example, how you would do that. This is different in Java than other languages. You have to backslash twice and that will match any white space. If you're searching for things that are not white space, that's what you do. And then if you wanted to find, say, anything that proceeds and you're looking for it to be n to m times, n being the minimum and m being the maximum. I'm gonna take you some through real world examples here now so you can actually see how this works. So let's say I'm looking for a word that is two to 20 characters in length. How exactly would I do that? It's actually very, very simple. You'd come in here and you'd type in uppercase A through Z and then lowercase A through Z and then you'd close your bracket and then you'd say minimum number of characters 2, maximum number of characters 20 and there you are, there's a regular expression. Now I didn't show you one of the other shorthand things, that is backslash W. And what you would do in this situation is just type in that, which is gonna match any characters, and then you put a two, and then you put a 20 inside of there. And I'll get more into that here in a second. So exactly how do you make these things work inside of Java? Well, I'm gonna do this in a separate method, public, static, void, and I'm gonna call this Regular expression checker, a regex, and I'm going to pass to this a string that is going to be the regular expression I'm searching for, and it's also going to contain the string that I want to check. Then what you need to do is actually define your regular expression. Now that regular expression is going to be passed to me with the regex right here so that I can use this like a method instead of trying to do something else with it. And then you start off with pattern and then give your pattern a name, and then you type in pattern.compile. And then the regex is going to be the string that is going to stand in for your regular expression. And all the code is available underneath this video. You should probably get it because it's heavily commented. Then you need to go matcher. And then you can type in whatever you want here. I'm going to type in regex matcher. And then I'm going to type in regex like that. And that guy comes from here. So, of course, you want to spell it the same way. And then you're going to type in matcher. And you're going to say string to check. Now, what you need to do is find all of the matches for this. And I'm going to keep this consistent, put a capital M inside of there. So how you do that is you go for a while loop, and then you type in regex matcher, and then you're going to call a method called find. And what it's going to do is it's going to kick out all of the matches for you. And as it's kicking out those matches for you, you're going to go if, this is what I'm doing anyway, I'm going to check that a string that is shot out by the method called group has a value and has a length. Basically, I'm just making sure that there is information in the results that are kicked out. So that's all I'm doing there. I'm just checking to make sure that the string that is kicked out has a length. If it does, I'm going to print it screen. So I just go regex matcher, and you call group, and then I'm gonna also call trim, and all trim does is get rid of all the white space if you forgot exactly what trim does, that's okay. And then you can also do a couple other different things. So let's say I wanted to also find out where the starting index was for this guy. I'm just gonna copy that, paste that inside of there. And then if I want to get the starting index, I just go regex, a regex matcher, and I'm going to type in start, and it's going to kick that out to me. Let me do this again, and we can also get the ending index, end index, have that also come out there on the screen. And then guess what? Instead of start, you're going to type in end. So there's a whole bunch of different ways to search for these regular expressions, and now you're going to actually see what some of them look like. 
and we're going to use the regex checker here. And then we're going to jump back up here. And remember, we just are going to try to find any words or string of characters that are 2 to 20 characters in length. I'm going to go like this. And then I'm going to define my regular expression. And I'm going to say in this situation, there's going to be a space followed by capital A through Z, lowercase a through Z. Doing this the long way. And then I'm going to type in 2 and 20. And then I'm going to put in that there should be a space after that. And the string that I'm going to be searching for. And of course, you could search through files. You can search through anything. We'll get into that later on, though. And we'll execute it. And there you could say it found my first name. It found the abbreviation for California and the abbreviation for PA. And it also printed out the start index and the ending index. So let's continue on and we'll find other interesting regular expressions. Like I said before, there's shorthand for a whole bunch of different things. So let's say you were looking for digits or numbers. That's how you would find that, lowercase d. Anything that is not a digit or a number, uppercase d. And then let's say you wanted to find something that occurred a very, very specific number of times, say five times. That's exactly what you do. You just put the five inside of there. So knowing that, let's go in here and let's do a couple other little searches. So let's say, uh, for example, I was looking for what in my country is called a zip code. How would I do that? A zip code is five digits long. That's it. Okay, so knowing that, what, how exactly we're we going to look for it. Well, in this situation, I'm going to use a shorthand version for digits and just put a D inside of there. And then inside of here, I'm going to get rid of this because I know there's only going to be five digits inside of it. And if we execute it, you're going to see it works. And there you go, one, two, three, four, five. So it searched through all this stuff right here and figured out that that is exactly what I was looking for. Well, let's say that I wanted to look for states that either begin with a C, for example, or a A, for example. Well, this is only going to kick back CA as a result, but you're going to be able to see how to do searches for states and other different sorts of codes and things like that. So I'm looking for two characters that start with A, C, or A. And then I'll make it a little bit more complicated by doing a search for states in specific. So what is the regular expression for that? Well, I'm going to go A, and I'm going to put a bracket inside of here, this bracket. And then for U.S. states, there are only four states that begin with an A, and they are then preceded by the letter K, L, R, and Z. And close off that bracket. Then we're going to put OR inside of there. So there's a new regular expression code. And for U.S. states that begin with C, there's only three of those, and that's C, A, O, and T. And if I come in here, and we can do our little search. I'm going to get rid of those spaces right there, and I'm just going to type in exactly what I just did. And we get them up here, and you can see it found it. And just for the heck of it, let's also put Alaska inside of there, and you'll see that it's smart enough to find that as well. However, it did not kick back PA. Why? Because it doesn't begin with an A or a C. And you can see it found California and Alaska. Now, what if you wanted to do a search for something, but you only wanted to have a minimum but no maximum? How you would do that? Put this bracket inside of here, and would represent your minimum, and then you would put a comma, and there you'd be able to have a minimum. Say your minimum was five characters, but you didn't want to have a maximum. Well, that's exactly how you would define that. Then again, if you put a plus sign inside of a regular expression, what does that mean? That means whatever proceeds must occur one or more times. And of course, I'm going to give you some examples. And then also, it's good to know that there are certain things that you need to backslash inside whenever you're creating a regular expression. Anytime you would use a period or a caret or a star or a plus sign or a question mark or either of these brackets or these brackets or a backslash, of course, or an or symbol, or this bracket system. So those are things that always need to be backslashed. So let's start playing around with this strange string right here. And let's say I want to grab any string that contains one or more star symbols. All right, so how am I going to do that? Real simple, just get rid of that. And then here we're going to type in strange instead. So they're strange. And then right here, or just to make this even more interesting, let's say I want to grab these brackets here because I also have to show you how they're backslashed and all that. In this situation, I'm going to put this bracket like this. I'm going to forward slash it like that. I'm going to put in exactly what I'm looking for. So remember, I had to backslash this because it's a protected character. And I'm going to say one or more of those things. I'm going to throw another bracket around it. And let's execute it. And you can see it found this where there's three brackets, there's two, and there's one. So that's another way to find protected sorts of information. 
And then, like I said to you before, let's say if I was doing a search that had one or more of whatever precedes it. Well, that's what the plus sign does. You can see in that situation, there's the results in there. The exactly the same, but that was sort of like a shorthand way of being able to get to it. Let's also say that you know, I would want to do a search for anything. Oh, well, it's technically not anything. It's going to be a period is going to represent anything but a new line. Now, if I wanted to find anything, literally anything, and I just demand that there are three of them, that's it. So I'm looking for anything as long as there's three of them in a row. And of course, get rid of that period right there. That'll throw an error because it's not commented out. And there you are, there's three of anything. And the reason why they're sometimes showing up here is, and it looks like there's only two of things, is because there are actually spaces inside of there. So spaces, it matches spaces, it matches anything but new lines. And like I said before, if we would wanna do a search for a any type of word type character, and I'll show you what I mean by word type character. Just put those two slashes in there and a W, and that is gonna be exactly the same as A through Z uppercase, A through Z lowercase, zero through nine, as well as an underscore. And then if you would wanna search for anything but that, this is how you would do that. Comment that out like that, and then put an uppercase letter. So it's gonna match for anything that isn't one of those things. What do you do whenever you would want to search for results that occur zero or more times? And you put a star symbol in, and I'm going to show you how exactly how to do that. So let's come down here again, and let's search for any type of characters that match what I just showed you up there that occur zero or more times. And then you can see also we've got a little situation here where we're getting spaces involved and things like that. Let's get into something that's a little bit more interesting. And by a little bit more interesting, let's say that I want to look for an email address. So let's just come up here, grab this guy, throw him down here, and let's figure out exactly what makes up an email address. So come down here into the regular expression area. Well, I know inside of an email address, I'm gonna have potentially uppercase letters. So just put that inside of there. I'm also potentially gonna have lowercase letters. I'm also potentially gonna have numbers. So I'm just putting in everything I could potentially have. I could have a period. I could have an underscore, percent signs. I could have dashes. Then of course, followed by an at symbol. So remember this plus sign means one or more of any of these different things things because we're definitely going to demand that there's at least one of those in there. Then after the at symbol, we're going to define pretty much exactly the same thing. So copy that, throw that in there. I don't think we can technically have percent signs though. Put that in there, close that off. Remember one or more. And then what are we going to have? We're going to have periods. So put a period inside of there. And then what are we going to have? We're going to end with A through Z or A through Z. Close that off. And then that should end with either two, two, four characters in length. So this part here is going to be defining this right here. And then, of course, the at symbols itself. And then we're going to be looking for all these different things. And then the final part is going to be a series of characters that are going to be two to four in length. And that is how we're going to define our search for our email. And in this situation, we're going to be looking for that email in long string. So let's file save it and see what happens. And you can see, of course, it looked through that text and it found the match, which is johnsmith at hotmail.com. What would happen if we want to perform a search, but we don't necessarily know if something's going to exist? And this would come into play in situations where we have phone numbers, just like you see here. There's all kinds of different types of phone numbers. So let's actually just copy this so we can look at these phone numbers and then decipher exactly what they are. We're going to think our way through exactly what potentially a phone number could be. And if your phone number doesn't fit into this, it should. And either way, you should be able to figure out exactly what I'm doing here. All right, so there's a whole bunch of different potential phone numbers that we want to search for. It looks really, really hard, but it's really, really not. Well, we know our regular expression we're searching for could potentially have a one in front of it or some number in front of it. But we don't know that that's true because if we just demand that that's there, well, it's not going to find these other phone numbers. So what do we want to do? Well, what I want to do is come down here, put a little brace inside of there, and then I'm going to define that there could be a number from zero to nine inside of it. And if there is, chances are there's either going to be a space inside of it or there's going to be a dash that follows that number. However, that doesn't need to exist. Well, how do we say that something doesn't need to exist? We put a question mark in, and that question mark is going to pertain to this information that's inside of those brackets. But what if we don't know if any of this is going to exist easily? That's why we have the brackets there. All surrounded, we say, you know what? We don't know if that'll exist either. Leave any questions or comments below and I'll be more than happy to elaborate if this doesn't make sense. Well, then what do we know? Well, we know that potentially this part right here could exist. Now, 
let's throw that one back in there so you know what we're doing. So we know that this potentially could exist, but however, these brackets don't need to exist as we can see here, and there's nothing here at all. So let's come in here and try and figure out exactly how we would do that. I'm searching for this guy right here, and it's a protected character, remember? There it is up here, so that means I need to backslash it. Backslash? Right like that. So I'm doing that search for that thing. However, it doesn't need to exist. So I put a question mark inside of there. However, if it does exist, probably going to be numbers from zero to nine inside of there. And what? They're going to be three in length, or at least in my situation, they're going to be. And then there could be a closing bracket, which is this guy. However, because it's protected, I need to backslash it. So there I did. I just backslashed it. However, none of this needs to exist at all. So I went and put that closing question mark there. And then I could also do an or statement and say that we could have zero through nine and that there are three in length and no brackets there. And then we could close that off. And then the division between these numbers and things like that could be a space, which I put the space there, or it could be a dash. Put that there. However, there might not be any dashes or any space. So just put a question mark inside of there. Well, then what do we know? Well, we know that we're expecting zero through nine in digits to follow and that it's three in length. Again, we're doing this part right here now, if you didn't know. And that could be preceded by either a space or a dash. Close that off or nothing. That's what the question mark means. Then we expect zero through nine again. And in this situation, it should be four in length. Or we can say otherwise that we could have A through Z, A through Z. And this would account for people just typing in just seven characters in a row. So zero through nine. And if they did that, that it would more than likely be seven in length. So we're basically looking for situations where this is what is entered and nothing else is entered. What I'm accounting for is if people are typing in numbers based off of what their letter code is. Okay, so that's what that is, if that doesn't make sense. And they would be seven in length. And then I close off the whole entire bracket. And if I did that right and file save it, execute it, yep. You can see that it kicked out all three of the different types of numbers that are potential telephone numbers in that string. Just play with this stuff. You'll get it. You just have to kind of get in your brain exactly what all these codes mean. But they're really simple, so don't make anybody think that they're not simple because they just are. And of course, you can also use regular expressions to do like string replaces and things like that. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do that by creating another method down here. So let's say I wanted to do a regular expression replace. I'm just going to go public, static, void, regex, replace. And in this situation, it's going to send a string to replace this. And what this guy's going to do specifically is I'm going to create a pattern. And that pattern is basically going to target in on eliminating spaces inside of strings. So I'm making this kind of specialized. I'm sure you kind of get it here. And let's say we want to match one or more spaces. So it's going to kind of clean up string code. Well, then what do I need to do? No, well, just so that you know, if you would want this to be case sensitive, and since it's a space, it doesn't make any sense. But let's say we were doing a search in which we were trying to replace uh, characters a through Z, like that, and we wanted to be case sensitive, meaning ignore the case. We just put a comma inside of there, and then you would type in pattern dot case insensitive. This has to be uppercase as well. And in essence, what that's going to do is that if you didn't have here, it would be the same as if you would type in A through Z in lowercase as well. So that's how you do searches based off of being case insensitive. But let's go back to what we originally had here. As I'm doing stream of consciousness sort of programming, some of this stuff sort of comes in. Now you're basically going to do exactly the same thing. You're going to type in matcher, and I'm going to type in regex matcher. It's equal to, except I'm going to type in replace this time, matcher, and the string to replace. I'm actually going to do a trim on it, and that just gets rid of the white space on both ends of it. And then call regex matcher, replace all. And then in this situation, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that I want to replace all the spaces that are up here. And then I want to instead insert comma followed by a space. And that's what that guy's going to do right there. And then, of course, make this uppercase. File save it. And then we'll scroll up here. And here you can see I'm calling the method that we just created right here. So let's execute it. And let's replace all the spaces with commas and spaces. And I had a little bug. And the bug was that I didn't have pattern inside of there. And there you can see I went in there, found all the spaces, and replaced them with commas and spaces. So there's a whole bunch of things with regular expressions. Leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.